Hello and welcome to Tabletop 24. I'm Alan. I'm John. I'm Brian. And welcome to another episode of We'll Play Again, where we take a look at games we've recently got to the table with a view about how quickly we're going to get them back to the table. With ever growing collections, time can be precious. So we ask the question of Would we play again? Today we have After Us from Catch Up Games. In After Us, we are playing competing tribes of primates after the apocalypse has happened. And we are looking to enhance our tribe to further our intelligence with the ultimate goal of scoring victory points. The game is broken down into several rounds. Each round it has three different phases. The first phase is going to be assembling our tribe for that round. And what we do with that is we draw the top four cards of our deck. We all start with the same deck of cards, but we'll have shuffled it to begin with. We then lay that out in front of us and decide which order we would like those cards to go. So for instance, let's just say I was looking to do something like this. And we can then resolve these cards top to bottom from top left to bottom right. You'll notice there's three different rows. These rows tend to be top row gathering items, second row converting those into potentially different items and the bottom row is mainly going to be focused around victory points. So in this instance I'll start by gaining a battery, a grain and a fruit, another grain and a fruit, two flowers and another fruit. Put these face down for a second. I'm then able to look at the next row and we've got some conversion going on. Now I could if I wanted to convert this through into victory point, but I'm not going to. I'll get a victory point here, which John will move me up on there. I'm not going to choose to enact this one, and I've got no completed frames at the bottom. We're only enabled to enact an ability if you have a completed frame. So these ones that have got broken, we won't be able to. And also you'd have to meet the condition in order to, to move it along. So I've gained a few resources ready for that phase. The second phase is attracting new apes. Now we need to grow our tribe. We need to improve our tribe. We start off with just some uh, with just some basic cards. So we will take our eight discs or primate discs. In secret, we'll choose one of those. Each of these has got a ability on it and one of the different primates we can choose from. So a gorilla could give us two rage. A chimpanzee enables us to reenact a completed cell. Uh, the mandrel gives us victory points. And the orangutan gives us some energy. Energy is quite important. It's one of the more valuable resources in the game. Once in secret, we've chosen that. We'll have it face down on our board. We then get to flip it. Everybody would then get the benefit. So in this instance, I'll gain two energy. And we can then attract the primate that we've selected. And in order to do so, we need to spend some of those resources that we've gathered. Now, they're printed on the board and they come in two different tiers. Bottom are all tier one, top is all tier two, and they will cost three flowers, three fruit, three grain, or for a chimpanzee, it could be any of the types of resource, but it needs to be three of the same. So again, it would need to be three fruit, three flowers, or three grains. For the tier two, it's six of everything that we've just gone through. So I would, for instance, spend my three fruit to gain me a tier one orangutan. Now these are all a little bit different as you go through. That will then go to the top of my deck. Okay. We then go into our resting phase where we just discard our assembly. That goes off to the side. And then we restart the round by drawing our next four cards. Some actions that we can take during any point of the round will either be to use some of these objects that have been found in the wasteland. And we'll be spending a number of energy in order to enact its ability in the chosen phase. So for instance, this bottom one at any point in the game, we can spend five energy to get five victory points. Here, we're gonna be doing some, some different bits with swapping cards out. Also, as we gain rage throughout the game, we are enabled to spend four rage at any point to discard a card from the game in our assembly. You might not wanna do that whilst your assembly is complete, but you may need to, to gain a resource. Because when you discard a card, you will be able to get the rage bonus that's in the top of the, of the primate. Now, that will be different depending upon what level you've got, or whether it's one of the bog standard cards that you start the game with. 
We keep going around until one player has reached 80 points. Once you've reached 80 points, the game will come to an end at the end of that phase, and the person furthest past 80 wins, or the only person past 80 will win. And that's after us. So I was quite excited by this game, because as you know, I'm a big sci-fi fan. I like apocalypse stories. And so I was keen to see what this was about, but I was a bit disappointed actually, because I feel like the theme was sort of just tacked on and the gameplay itself doesn't really relate to any particular theme. Um, there's a few disconnects which um, upset me, uh, like it's set in 2083, so only about 60 years in the future. Um, and they're able to use mobile phones and get their bastards and things, which doesn't seem right to me. Well, so it, like breaks, it breaks my Blade Runner 2019, and we're well past that now. So. Yeah, but they weren't apes or primates, so it just breaks my immersion slightly. Um, but, you know, it's a fancy enough game, it's colourful, I can see what they're trying to do. Yeah. Straight... We some fantastic artwork from Vincent Dutre. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's almost a little bit abstracted away from. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'd prefer it if it didn't have that theme. I mean, it was just a set collection because this is a mechanic is quite quite clever, and I think, um, and that's what the game is. It's trying to optimize your the the the, the set the of frames. Puzzles, yeah. And you can yeah. do it each each set each time you do it is a different combination to make it work for you that round, and you can only play what's in front of you. Yeah. The UKG, there was a, a big buzz about this. There was the, the big three buzzes for me were Earth, mm -hmm. which everybody was scrambling for a copy of. Lorcana, there was queues around the corner to try and play that. And then this, people are, there was queue, queue to buy this. And I think we tried to queue up to get it. And they said, no, cut off here. There's no more copies. Yeah. But thanks to uh, Rory, Rory we scored a copy on the very last day. So thank you. Um, but yeah, it, it is fast simultaneous play and everybody's sort of like right i need four of these six of these do those and and you're taking and everybody's playing so mercifully it makes it quite into you know just playing like that the downside is you're playing your own game you're not you're not necessarily paying attention to what other people are doing you're paying attention to where they go on the, around the scoreboard because you've got no how touch you winner but you are playing your own little game heads down i'm doing this yeah, there's very, there's very little interaction. The only thing I did, didn't mention in the rules overview is that when you resolve the the sort of primate tokens, you can spend two of a, two identical of any resource to trigger your neighbours, one of your neighbours' abilities. Yeah. So if I, for instance, played the orangutan and yeah. Brian had played the gorilla, I could then spend two these two flowers to get two rage, which might benefit me. It might not. Um, it might just give you that little extra option and I think in our very first game I used that and I just chained like four or five things together yeah. didn't I just to push me over, over well, the 80 the last time we played I, I kind of I managed to do this for a couple of turns so four grain two of those and then play my chimp to redo one of those for six and I could buy a six chimp straight away and the, the six cards are much better. They are significantly better than the three. So the idea is to be able to get those. And if you can chain these together to get those every time, you improve your hand pretty quick, combined with the rage. And if I'm, you know, I can spend my other two of these to do your rage. So I'm moving up two on the rage. And then by the time I'm getting rid of my gold and my cats, I'm skinning my card, hand down to be able to play the better cards all the time, which is in essence a deck builder. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the. The bit that attracted me, I, was, I thought it was deck building, and there is deck building to it, but you're not building it in the same way. You, each of these cards seems to be fairly different, and you don't know what you're pulling again. They're yeah. all blind. Now, that for me doesn't quite work because I, I everybody knows when I do my uh, deck building, draw a card. You're now in that. Yeah, draw a card. Um, but I can't predict what's going into my engine. No. Now, all of these will be fairly similar in the sense that the chimpanzee triggers abilities. The gorilla gains rage. The orangutan gets you energy. The mandrel gets you points. Mm -hmm. So you, all, you, they all are fairly similar, but where they are, whether they're on the left-hand side of the thing, the right-hand side of the card, it's a little bit yeah, more ambiguous. Make, you know, however you put these together... 
it, 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 and that's the thing. It's not like Clank, where you know that card's going to give you that ability. It's how they add, they they make you make that little puzzle to give you the, the stuff that you want. Mm. Yeah. I found that um, if you don't get enough of these sixes and concentrate on maybe stripping your deck out or getting the lower ones, but other people are doing that. That can make a big difference, mm. and you can get to the point where there's a bit of a runaway lead going on, and it's not quite enough points to catch them back up again. Mm. If you make a couple of rounds of uh, uh, four rounds, so you've got to watch out for that and be on it from the beginning. Yeah, there there is a bit of a knack in it. It's not just about the points that you're getting from these. You need to be aware of these scoring you points yeah. and other bits. If you can spend two to get other points to push you up, <clears throat> because uh, we, a couple of games we played. It's just been like, do that and that and that. But then these extra points, it's almost like viticulture in that. Don't just look at the making the wine, yeah. just the cards to give you the yeah. points as well. Yeah. There's a bit more to it than just doing that. And you've got to be, have your eye on the loop and where they are. And the only other thing with the simultaneous play is I think you can suffer from that very first game. Mm. So when we played this our first game, it was very much right. I will do my board. You will do your board. You will do your board. And we'll talk through it. And I think... Yeah, maybe after a couple of rounds of that, people will get to it. But there's still that chance that somebody might make a mistake. And if you're if you're yeah. in an ex inexperienced playthrough, I think you could end up with people not cheating, but end up taking more than they were due by accident more than anything else. Well, and there's no rigid. there's no ownership there of actually. You, you, are you sure you can do that? Have you done that the right way? Type. Thing? It's, it's a bit like Monopoly taking an extra. Hundred dollars or whatever when you can, and, and people do it by mistake. But there's yeah. also a bit in Monopoly where I'll give somebody else two hundred dollars, and they'll be like, what, what? And it's like, yeah, it's, you know, and it would just genuinely be a mistake because there's so much going on. You're yeah. you're gaining and transacting so quickly, and sometimes even I've done it. I've gone along and gone, no, did I enact that one? Did I yeah, that one? Yeah, because you are going at such a pace, and I mean, I maybe it, it's just maybe slowed down. It's just the way that we were playing. Um, but it, it, it's quite stressful because uh, you know, consciously the other players are racing. Yeah, they've set their things up. They're collecting things. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure what the best call is for me here. And I'm, I'm and then and we're looking at you. Have you finished it, Brian? Um, not yet. You almost need something that you, you, not an egg timer, but right. I played, I played, and you, you, so you give people and people with AP will get stuck doing this potentially. Hmm. So you, you, especially towards the late game, especially yeah. if you see somebody's almost at that eighty points, and you need to yeah. catch them. Yeah, you, you you almost need something to just to flip over, say I'm ready, yeah. and then you just so you need to look away. down the bottom here to work out what you're going to need to get it up here to get yeah. this in the right order to start with. Yeah, so you almost need to read backwards. It is. A, it is. It's a puzzle, and I can see the the fun of it. But if you're not good at that kind of thing, you're gonna hate it. Yeah, yeah. and the, the thing is, because this is such a solo game, you could. Do this, collect your resources, flip your card, flip your token, take your card, do your points, and sit and wait till everybody's yeah. still doing this yeah. until, until their turn. Yeah. I think it's, it's got a good amount of luck in it, though. I think that it's not sort of constructive like potentially any every other Euro. You can't... Well, she can't build a deck that runs on an engine. It's got that amount of luck in it that... If you're going to sit down with people that just play a game, just want yeah. to play a game, just want to have yeah. fun with the game, yeah. they're they've only got you're only able to play with what's in front of you. Yeah. Now that might not be for you if you want to build an engine. If you're if if you get your kicks, really modifying that engine and that efficiency to its top ability, you're not going to get that here because you are sort of subject to the the, the draw and yeah. what you get. So. Yeah, but I think in that sense, it's got a good amount of luck because it's so accessible for people. Um, and with that saying, there is a moment when something clicks and you just get everything yeah. you wanted. And, well, yeah. and you yeah. can get those moments where you go, oh, I've, got, I've almost got a god hand. Yeah. Kind of thing, and <laughs> everything just flows. And you might have worked towards that and you might have gone, right, I put four mandrels in my deck so that I just get points on one turn. Exactly, exactly, and that's the thing. You, you know, if you you could just focus on getting all chimps, or you could get all gorillas, or you could get all, and just you know, as if, if you can, if you get all gorillas and you get rid of all your your golden um, attacks, you know, you're just going to have a lovely hand. And you know, so these have got lots more to them. The sixes have got lots more to them, so you're going to be getting a lot more points as you go through. So. 
Yeah, and I think, I think you, you've kind of got to engineer some of that a little mm-hmm. bit. But there is there is definitely luck in what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, the bit that I really like is that it's an, uh, an efficiency puzzle on every turn. You're not building an an engine to get you to the end of the game. You're building an engine to get you through that round. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And advancing you more than yeah. everybody else has advanced. Yeah. And I think there's that sort of race in there. And because of how quickly it does play, I think it feels like a race. Yeah, it does it, feel, feel like right. I'm taking yeah. you out, and yeah, the pace at which you're you're following, I think it, it can be quite, um, it can be quite a pace, then it can be quite a race, and it just just feels that way. Because it is based the first one to eighty, there is a premium to scoring the points as you go through. Mm. So you where you might start getting the resources. You then look at how how you're going to be scoring those points and maximising those occasions to get the points on the board. Yeah, I mean the, the hand that I had out at the very start of this, um, I didn't trigger the conversion of points. That two points could cost me towards the end of the game. Um, it could make me lose that lead that, mm. or, or not not be able to catch up. Mm. Um, the the it for what the game is the solitaire nature of it irks me some. Um, but the one thing that really and bothers me the most is why aren't the batteries like just a wooden electricity symbol? Why aren't they? Why are they? Why are they cardboard? Well, they cardboard and everything else is wood. Yeah, yeah. A, a cardboard, a wood, wood electric symbol. Yeah. Yellow. It would have fitted. It would have been okay. Anyway, yeah, and, that, and that's fair. I think everything else, and um, we've seen this a lot in a few games recently, is where there's that one thing. Yeah, <laughs> just that one thing. Everything else is perfect, but there's that one thing, and that, and this, it's, it's that. Yeah. Check out our new series. That one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Um, and the, my sort of last negative feel on this is that there's a lot of variety in this game, which is good. But the, the variability is in the luck of what you draw. There's no, there's no agency to the variability. This, the only agency you get is the seven of these, and you choose three. Most of the time, you're going to choose them at random, which there in itself is luck. Yeah. Yep. So you kind of, yeah, you are getting that. Now, larger player counts, I don't think it changes the game much. No. Um, lower player counts, I don't think it changes the game much. The one thing I would be interested to do, and I was hoping to do it before we, we did this we'll play again, was to play solo. Because I love the puzzle in this. I love what it's asking me to, to present. I don't know how the solo will play against that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to look to get that um, to the table as a, as a sort of a solo adventure on there. But with all that being said, John, would you play again? I'd play again. If it came off the shelf um, and was put in front of me, I would play again. It's not something I would look to play because I think the, the, the solo synchronous nature of it makes it very much, you like you say, like to play it solo and see how it plays. You are playing it solo. Yeah, we love to play our games socially. And I yeah, think yeah, yeah. You're, there, because it's simultaneous, you're not having that social interaction. You're just focusing on what you're doing. Yeah, it, it would be almost more interesting if you, you did your thing and then the person to the left of you resolved all the bits for you so it would it put in a yeah. check and balance perhaps yeah. or any other takeaway from this is don't play monopoly with me because i'll give you free money but yeah i'd play it again um you know it's um it's it's an okay game i'd hesitate to play this again i don't think it's got enough in it um i think it's it's too much of a solo game mm. in a setting that's not a solo setting um and it just seems a bit there's lots of other games out there um, that I'd much rather spend my time doing. Yeah. I mean, it's so we'll play again. I love the artwork. I like the production. Yes, we've got the niggle about the energy tokens. I like the idea of the puzzle. But I think I want to try this solo, and I think that might be where I go for this, which is a shame because it's got a sick player player count. Mm. Mm. But I don't see what adding more players is going to do to this at all, if I'm honest. I mean, the three of us are sat here with this in front of us. Six, again, six players. But I suppose six players around the table playing any game is going to cause problems, hmm. especially as if you've got... I mean, you're not putting sets out and you're not building a tableau or something. You're just sticking yeah. four out to... I mean, to there's no reason why you can play this game with 20 people. If, if you've got the, the tokens. And, and, and there's enough cards in there. Yeah. Because it makes no difference. You just, it's the, the first one to get yeah. to 80. And the only benefit is you're first on the left, first on the right. Yeah, there's yeah. this, this is slight mechanic here where you can um, choose your, your neighbours 
abilities. Yeah. So it seems like a bit of a downer, but it is a lovely looking game and it, it does play reasonably well. Um, thank you for joining us for this episode of Warplay Again. If you haven't done so already, please check out the videos on the channel. Give us a like and a subscribe, and we will catch you next time. Take care. Bye bye. bye.